Farms.com Market School with expert commodity analyst Mo Agostino is an online educational video series designed to help you, the farmer, improve your knowledge of grain marketing. Farms.com Market School is brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds. DeKalb, growing confidence. Today's video is about hedging with options. Today's topics include, we'll define what options are, how options are traded, how options are priced, and then we're gonna give you some quick, simple examples on how to use options for hedging purposes. So our first topic today is defining what options are. Options are financial instruments that give the buyer, this is the definition, the buyer the right but not the obligation to take a specified future position at a specified price. The specified price on that, option is called the strike price, the price at which the underlying futures position can be taken. Whether the futures position is taken is at the discretion of the buyer of the option. Strike prices are set by the commodity exchange, the CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or the ICE exchange, the Internet Intercontinental Exchange, in predetermined increments. So for example, corn is at a 10 cent increment while canola at a $5 increment. Here's an example. This is provided by www.qtplus.com. So, um, in this image, you can see the blue column. That's your strike price. On the left of that blue column uh, is calls. On the right is puts. The columns right next to the blue column is the final closing price for that option. So there's two types of options, puts and calls. Calls give the buyers the right, but not the obligation to be long futures at a specified strike price. That would only happen is, for example, if you went long corn at four dollars and all of a sudden uh, dry weather sends corn futures to eight bucks you could opt to own that long futures position at four dollars and then eventually get rid of that futures position at eight dollars puts give buyers the right but not the obligation to be short futures at a specified strike price option prices are called premiums and are negotiated by the buyers and sellers our second topic today is how are options traded? Options for grains are traded until approximately the third Friday of the month before contract maturity. You can they trade on some exchange like the Intercontinental or CME exchange. Our third topic today is how are options priced? While premiums are decided by buyers and sellers, they have two components, intrinsic value and time value. Let's focus on intrinsic value first. Intrinsic value is the difference between the strike price of the option and the underlying futures price. For example, assume a person owns a $75 put where the market, the underlying futures market is trading at 70, the futures price is below the strike price, therefore the intrinsic value is $5. Remember, it's a $75 put, so for that, option to have any intrinsic value would have to be below the futures price. Intrinsic value would be positive or zero. It's never negative. In other words, a $65 put will have no intrinsic value in a $70 market. In other words, that $70 futures market would have to trade below 65 in order to have some sort of positive intrinsic value. A risk premium is equivalent. Think of a risk premium on the option is equivalent to like insurance premium on car or house. What the buyer of the option pays the seller to accept price risk. It depends mainly on volatility. The more, the greater the volatility in that underlying futures price, the higher the time value. Similarly, the closer the strike price is to the futures price, the higher the time value because the seller has a higher risk that the option will be exercised. Time value is an option's worst enemy. Time value erodes over time as the worst right about the end of that uh, as that option gets to, to expire within that last month or so. Our fourth topic today is using examples to explain hedging with options. The holder of an option has three alternatives when dealing with options. Once you buy an option, whether it's a call option or put option, again, if you're buying a call option, you're hoping for prices to move up. If you're buying a put option, you're hoping for prices to move lower over time. Once you've purchased that option, the first thing you can do is offset it. Most options get offset, which will pass the rights to the third party. You purchase the option and you would then sell it to offset the position. The other thing you can do is exercise it. This happens very rarely. I don't think it needs to be part of any risk management plan because you start to get into speculation. But it's, it, exercising it means you're giving the hold of the underlying futures position not likely as long as there is time value for the option. The third alternative is to allow it to expire. The first and third can be part of a risk management program. Again, don't like to get into that whole exercise. So here's an example uh, using corn to illustrate how 
put options work when it comes to hedging. So a, a corn producer considers hedging against 5,000 corn bushels to be harvested in late November. You can sell December futures at a current price of say 720 a bushel, or that same producer can buy a December 720 strike put option. Now, why are we buying a 720 at the money? We didn't get into at the money, in the money, out of the money, uh, because that is what really works when it comes to hedging. This is a little bit of a tip here, uh, but always we try to use at the money instead of out of the money or in the money. We're not gonna get too complicated here, but when you're buying put options, try to buy at the money options. So 720 to protect a minimum futures floor. Uh, this 720 put option cost 87 cents. Um, the 720 strike December corn put option, you multiply that by the 5,000 trading units and you get 4,350. So you'd have to spend $4,350 to protect what is 720 less the 87 cent per bushel cost, which is a floor of 633. So in the event that corn futures rise, then this put option will eventually trade to zero by expiry. However, if the price of corn falls from 720 to four, then you're gonna make some money on this put option. And again, it protects you against that seven, the 633 floor. A 750 strike put option is called an out of the money option. So the 720 is the at the money option. 750 is out of the money. A 620 strike put option is known as in the money. The in the money options start to act like a futures position where it hedges dollar for dollar move in futures, whereas the out of the money does not. If you do the math and you subtract, calculate the difference between the intrinsic and time value on each option, you'll find that the in the money options have less time value. Remember, time value is your worst enemy and are cheaper compared to an at the money or out of the money, but you better be right in the direction because you're putting up more capital to buy that in the money option, you might as well play futures or short futures. Um, so be careful there. That's why we tend to use at the money options. And when do you use them? You use them when markets are extreme peaks, like in 2012 US drought when corn went to 849. 90 to 95% of all options expire worthless, but if they do, that means your cash position was that much higher. Each contract covers 5,000 bushels. So again, in this example, it's 87 cents per bushel times 5,000. So it's gonna cost you $4,350. 720 less the 87 is your floor, 633. Plus or minus your local basis. This does not account for local basis. So a 750 strike put option is called, again, an out of the money option. 720 is in the money. So let's go through a quick uh, hedging example with options using corn. So the cash futures price is 723, less the basis at 50 cents. So your forward sale price today is 673. So in June, the producer could sell corn for 673 plus or minus your local basis. In November, the futures price drops to $4. We assume the basis stays the same, so your cash sale is 350. Um, and so, um, at, in June, we assume that you can either sell futures at 723 or buy a put at 720 for 87 cents, which is your cost. The future result in November is that it fell to four, so you offset that. Your gain is 323, whereas the option result, in this case we did use options, you sell the option, you offset it, so it's a gain of 323 less the cost, so it's 236. You add the 236 to the 350 cash sale, because that's what you would have got in November, and it would have been equivalent to a 586 net price, plus or minus your basis. So if prices fall, notice that there are actually three outcomes. The first is the most obvious, it is what happens if no price protection is taken, corn prices fall to $4 a bushel. The second outcome is hedging with futures. Futures fall by 323 a bushel, a profit that was then added onto the cash price of corn. The third outcome is from hedging with a put. In this case, the put premium increased by 323 because of the intrinsic value, but decreased by 87 cents because of the loss of time value of the cost. The profit of 236 per bushel is added to the cash price to corn to get a net price of 586. Let's go through another example here with uh, futures rising. So we've got the same example 
We're in June. Um, futures on corn at 723. Basis assumes uh, we assume that it's flat, f minus 50 cents under futures. In November, the price rises to 850. Basis minus 50, so your flat price is eight bucks a bushel. You can either sell futures or buy put options. If we sell futures at 723, we have put option at 720 strike, cost 87 cents. If we offset the futures at 850, we lose 127. If we offset the option, we actually um, get nothing from it. It expires worthless because the price rose. You wanted the price to drop. And so you take that 87 cents, subtract it from the $8, and you still get 713 per bushel. So if prices rise, the first outcome is with no protection, no price protection, the producer wins by obtaining a higher price, 850 a bushel. But this is hindsight, not risk management. The second outcome is hedging with futures. Futures lost 127 a bushel, loss that was then added to the cash price of corn. The third outcome is from hedging with a put. In this case, the put premium expired worthless, but decreased the producers was still able to lock in a higher corn price of 713 a bushel. He didn't, uh, wasn't able to get the full amount of that 850, but he was still get, able to get 715, 713 per bushel. That protected him in the event that the price would have fallen. The major point of this part of the example is that options are much less restricted than futures. Futures are wonderful if prices are falling. Unfortunately, they do not. They do nothing to help the outcome when futures are rising. So some of the key uh, insights uh, in today's topic is that buying puts is a substitute for selling futures. Hedging with futures is more effective when the underlying commodity is falling when one has sold futures to lock in a price. Hedging with options is like insurance. Options give protection against the downside but allow opportunity for the upside, whereas futures will not do that. How much one values the insurance concept depends on the premium and how much futures change. Cash flow is predictable with options. A producer can go to the following links to obtain option quotes. So you can go to the CME group, you can go to farms.com, you can go to the ICE exchange, the internet, intercontinental exchange. In summary, understanding how to hedge with options and knowing some of the advantages and shortcomings can assist farmers with managing the risk and volatility in the future. Think of options as a form of insurance, another tool in your arsenal that you can use when needed to take advantage of opportunities when the physical market is not available or when production is questionable.